Okay, so I'm wanting to demonstrate here how you can actually configure your keyboard uh, so that these little knobs here, or even buttons, um, which are configurable from your MIDI controller to send certain MIDI signals to your, uh, your DAW or even your synthesizers, and um, how you can actually set it up so that your uh, Cubase software interprets those, those um, changes um, so that you can you can actually control um, the settings within your VST instruments or even um, different transport controls within um, within Cubase itself. So the first thing you want to do is you want to go to the MIDI remote section down here, and you'll want to add a new MIDI controller. Um, there is like an option to like choose from different ones that might exist that are in this this uh, scripts section here but um, we're just gonna go ahead and create a new one from scratch um, so um, I go ahead and I click here and you can choose the vendor in my case you know my vendor is Nick Tar oh, why the hell is oh, my keyboard isn't working let's see here. there we go Nick Tar okay so that's the that's it okay so impact LX 25 plus script creator is me. Oh, I can't put a plus, so nope. I'll just put plus like that. And the script creator is my name. Okay. And then of course we just map this out. So there we go. Okay. So so this is just identifying information. I'm going to click on create MIDI controller surface and it'll take me to this editor here. Now um, this is really easy. Okay. There are different options for the different types of controls over here. So on my keyboard here, actually on the far, far left, I'm actually going to move this over. I actually have a little slider here that I can move up and down. So, and actually you saw that I just moved it and it just did something here. I'm actually going to delete that because it's I'm not using a knob. This is actually a fader. So I'm going to click on fader. And now here, I can like kind of like size it so it's about the right size. It's on the far left of my device. And I'm just going to go ahead and scroll up. And as soon as I move it, you can see that it... it what it does is it actually maps that to that knob. Whatever MIDI CC, which is called, uh, which stands for MIDI Continuous Control, whatever MIDI CC signal is sent from this this uh, fader, um, Cubase picks up on it and knows and automatically maps that to the fader. Next, I'm going to choose knob, and I'm going to choose the right size for the knob. I'm going to go up here, and I'm just going to turn this knob. Boom. So boom, it just mapped that knob to this knob, graphical knob on the screen. And I, I can just, since there's four in a row here, I can just move the next one, and then move the next one, and then move the next one. Which it somehow is not detecting. Oh wait, no, it already did it. Okay. Because there's four, and now there's four. Okay. Now I'm going to move this down here, and as you can see, my, um, my different knobs here are a little bit offset in a weird way so now that this is set here I can go ahead and move this knob move that knob come on move that knob there we go move this knob and then move that knob you might have to go pretty pretty wide with it for it to detect it okay so there we go I think that's all we really care about here um, I do have other pads but I don't want really to use those pads as buttons actually then let's go ahead and do that anyway um, I'm just going to go ahead and move this little graphical thing down here so that I can move this and expand it. So I've got uh, eight different pads on here, so I can go down here and, and click on trigger pad, move it up here, and then I can just go ahead and let's see, let's make those a little bit more square maybe. Maybe do this. Okay, there we go. So pad, 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 and then click down here, pad, pad, pad. Okay, so there we go. We've got a uh, fader. We've got eight knobs and eight pads that we can assign to different things inside of Cubase. Okay, so now I'm just going to click over here. I'm going to make this a little bit skinnier. I'm going to click up here, make this a lot skinnier here. And there we go. Now we've got a nice kind of layout. Now, my keyboard has some other buttons on here. These buttons are actually um, integrated with Cubase through a special driver. Um, we're just going to imagine that those don't exist. Th these are not even MIDI mappable buttons anyway. Um, they're they're reserved for 
uh, DAW integration with Nectar keyboards. Well, um, let's go ahead and continue though. So let's see here. So I've I've done that. Now I'm going to go to the Mapping Assistant and it's going to show me these different things. And so I'm just going to double click on this. It's going to load that fader up there. And now if I expand selected track, okay, there's many, many different things you can map these controls to. But in this case, whenever I'm on a selected track, I want this fader to control the volume of that one track. And so, boom, I've made that, um, I've made that association now. Next, I'm going to click over here in this first knob. Let's see, I want to make sure. Okay, that's volume, yeah, okay. Now here, this first knob, I want that to actually be associated with what's known as Quick Control 1. So there we go, Quick Control 1. Click on this. I guess I have to double click here, so Quick Control 2. There we go, okay. Quick Control 1, 3, 4, 5. Oh, there we go. Six, seven, eight. Okay. Now, of course, we have these pads over here as well. Now, the tricky thing here is these pads are actually set up to send MIDI note data, not just the uh, continuous control known as MIDI CC. But um, so we're going to be sending a note and also controlling um, something within Cubase, but if you actually have MIDI buttons that you can use instead of pads, you know, this is what it would be perfect for. So we're just going to take the first pad here, and we're going to make that so that when we, when we press it, it will um, automatically start the song, and then this next button will make it so it stops it, this next button will make it so that it rewinds, this next one will make it go forward, this button down here will make it uh, activate the metronome click. Down here will make this one a cycle. Let's see. This one here will make this record. And then um, I'm not really sure if there's any. Oh, we'll just we'll leave it at that. In fact, actually, yeah, we'll leave it at that. Okay, so I'm gonna I'm just gonna click here. Oh, I need to go back to the editor. Let's see here. Go back to the editor. I'm just gonna click here and remove this one mapping. So that doesn't exist. Okay, so there we go. So all these are mapped out. We're good now. Okay, so now that we've got these all mapped out, what we can do um, is if we click on a track, um, there's this, um, in the inspector here on the, on the left, there's a quick control section. And this automatically showed up for some reason. I'm not sure if it just read the information from the plugin and automatically mapped um, suggested uh, things. I am using Retrolog, which is a Steinberg plugin, so that might be why it worked that way. Um, it looks like you can tell it to get default quick controls from the plugin. I think that's what it did here. Um, if you want to, though, you can remove these. But let's just go ahead and test those out first before we remove them and remount them. By the way, this quick control section here, if you don't see this over here to expand, you can always right click, go to setup section, and you can always scroll to the bottom and you can check or you know you can check uh, QC so that it shows up um, in the inspector here over on this on the left side. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and try to test this. Okay, there we go. You can see I move the knob and it actually it changes the volume in the plugin and it's also changing the value here within the track. Now, if I had multiple tracks, you can have on each track this QC is this quick control configuration is specific to the track. Okay, so let's see. We've got the volume. We've got the master tune. That's cool. We've got glide enable. Oh, that's just either on or off, as you can see. It turns glide on or off with the knob. A button would be probably better mapped to that, but it's using a knob, which is fine. Glide fingered. Okay, that's also an on and off. We've got glide time. That's a knob. Random pitch. Okay. Octave. Okay. That's cool. 
cool. And then, um, yeah, the octave of the, uh, the oscillator one. Okay, so there's a main, o <coughs> a main octave, and then there's the, the oscillator octave. Okay, so what if we wanted to change this, though? Because honestly, for me, I really like to play with the cutoff and the resonance. Those are, those are my favorite things. I really don't care about tune or volume, okay? So what you can do is you can click on this L right here to go into learn mode and then you click here on this one control and then you put your mouse over here and you click on or, or move the control that you want it to control and so now as you can see it's actually mapped to filter cutoff if I click here to what was the like the master tune you can see lightly that it's it's actually highlighted in red and now if I go over here to resonance I can change that and it remaps that so now I can click on this L here to turn that off. I'm not really sure why that was working with the filter, the quick controls on or off, but now I can actually now we can really shape the sound. Um, now, of course, you can also change the quick controls up here that are mapped. I believe that since this is a, yeah, since this is a instrument track, these are the same thing. Actually, they're not. As you can see, I actually did remap. The first two is filter, cutoff, and resonance, but this is still set up to master volume, master tune. So that's that's pretty cool. You've got quick controls that are specific to the actual the plugin that can be configured, uh, or you can do the track specific. I think the track specific is a lot more flexible because you can you can change them for each track. Um, you could perhaps even have your plugin set up um, in a, a rack, but have multiple um, MIDI tracks, each with their own different uh, configurations. So, let's go ahead and um, actually create another, add another track with a different instrument. Let's just see how this works out. So, let's try. Hmm, what do I want to do? Lots of options. Let's see. Let's try a Korg MS-20 just for the heck of it. So we'll call it MS-20. Hit add track. Okay. And so now, here it is. This is the init, init program. Okay. Um, it looks like we've got some kind of mapping already done. I really don't care about fine tune. Unless I'm trying to like detune saw waves or something. Huh, okay. So let's see if we can change this again. Let's put it in the learn mode. Let's choose the fine tune because that thing's just freaking useless. And, uh, of course, my favorite and everyone's favorite, especially on this specific synth, should be, where is it? I don't actually use this synth that much, but low pass filter, high pass, you know, low pass filter cut off. Let's try that. Boom. Nope, that didn't seem to work. Hold on. Uh -huh. There we go. I had to move it. Okay. So now... still going to the wrong place. Let's see here. Okay, that's low pass cutoff. Is this still staying? Okay, let's try that. Maybe I need to take it out of learn mode. Yeah, there we go. Just what we're looking for. So, there you have it. That's how you set up a new instrument. You map your controls to the MIDI remote, and then you can actually map those to your plugins. Uh, and I guess let's also check out these. So I can hit play. As you can see, I can hit stop. I can make it go back. Uh, I can turn the metronome on or off with this little pad. I can turn the loop on or off. And then I can hit record. I can hit stop. I can go back. So there you go. Like those, those, those are their, those pads. Even though I actually have 
those functions built into my keyboard. Uh, you might not, so you can definitely map those.